Chapter 37 Outlander by Diana Gabaldon We are bringing you another book review in our podcast, only this time we're traveling into the past with character Claire Randall or should we say Beecham? You'd know if you'd read the book. <laughs> Join us in this chapter where we tell you about all the reasons why this book is worth the read even if you've watched the show. You can also expect an in-depth review of the book and show. We will be answering questions like what do Claire and Gailis have in common? Why do Frank and Jonathan Randall look the same? Who is the best man for Claire? Who needs her more? Expect a very heated discussion. <laughs> answering all the, these questions and more. We post on the last Thursday of every month. Turn the page. Welcome to a new chapter of Between the Pages. We're your hosts. I'm Hanin. And I'm Nesma. We host this podcast together where we review and recommend books for you to read. We divided our chapters into two parts, starting with a spoiler review where we tell you what the book is about and what we thought about it. Then we move on to a more in-depth analysis of the book where we share our favorite moments, chat about the plot and contemplate what could happen next in the series. If it is a series. <laughs> um, today we have um, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, yeah. which is one of our favorite TV shows that we got attached to, I mm. think, a couple of years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Um, <laughs> the you're show like has my been memory there bank, you know. You long. remember everything. <laughs> Without you, I probably w- would forget half my life. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, we really wanted to review this book on our podcast for a while. And yeah. we finally picked it up. I think we were scared of picking it up because it's such a huge book to read. It is. And every book in the series is huge. Yes. And it is a huge, a huge series. Is it like nine, ten books till now? I think. I think it's almost ten. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I sure how many. I think it might many. be ten. Yeah. Want me to look it up? I don't. I I don't want to look it up. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, I've collected the first four. Yeah, you, same you as here. well. Yeah. But she bought them as a box set. Uh huh. And you have them all in tie-in edition, yeah. uh, Hanin style. <laughs> I collected them from all over. Like first one you got, f- you got for me from Germany. Yeah. The second one was from Greece. Uh, my cousin got it for me. <laughs> the third, the fourth one, uh, I got it f- before the third was from England, London, and, <laughs> and the third one you got it from Germany. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the my third... books have traveled more than I have. <laughs> the third one it turned out to be really big. Like yeah, a, like much a big, bigger than the other big one. edition. Yeah, wow. but I'm so glad I got it. You know the the th- the third book or. The third series, the poster, where they're both standing in front on opposite ends of the stone. Yeah. I didn't know what that was about when I didn't watch the show at first or read the books. And this is what made me want to watch the show. Remember when I got that picture for yeah, you? Yeah, told yeah, you, yeah. This is why I want to watch that show. <laughs> so for me, it was... Um, I remember being exposed to the poster several times mm-hmm. when, like, during high school. and But I remember it being a very adult show. Like, every time yeah. I saw, like, a glimpse of it on YouTube or anything. I felt that, like, like the characters <clears throat> were old. Yeah, yeah. I know? felt like the story wasn't really appealing. Like, mm-hmm. I always felt bored when I was watching the trailer. So I was like, nah, not really for me. Until one day, I was with my family. We were, like, in an Airbnb in Germany. Um, because we needed a bigger apartment when, like, the family comes together. Uh, so the the people there had an iPad. They left mm-hmm. it for us because they didn't have a TV. And the <laughs> iPad so happens to have uh, free access to Netflix. <laughs> um, it was their account, but we were allowed to, like, access it for a while. Yeah. And then I saw Outlander. I think, how old was I then? I'm 23 now. 
23 so years 20. ago. I mean, three years ago. So they it was like 20, 20, I think, yeah. 20, almost 21. So I think I was old enough to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And funny enough, we both started it at the same time without we telling each other. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, we didn't plan it. Yeah. We didn't, it wasn't, we usually plan our shows together, mm-hmm. like what yes. we watch. Yeah. But um, that was, I was binge watching it for like three days straight. I Me didn't too. do anything else. Me too. I was like second, third episode into season two without even realizing that, wow, I've, I've, like I'm in a different season, you know? Yeah. That was my first like proper Netflix experience. Me like too. the, yeah. where you like go down that rabbit hole of next episode, next episode, next episode. And mm. <laughs> at some point it even it goes like are you still watching you know that moment <laughs> it's like yes i'm still watching i'm still here god damn it keep playing <laughs> no it doesn't appear to me no it never no, happens it never happens <laughs> it happened to me like once not like a lot it was just yeah. once but i thought that was really funny but yeah we're here now we've seen i think most of the show i haven't watched season five um i've I hadn't had the like No, I have, I think. The interest to really watch it yet. I don't know why. Yeah. They're growing older and I don't know if I want to go there yet, you know. It's it's uh, <laughs> so much is happening. Like there is a young couple and them, so Yeah. Um All right, let's get back to Outlander, the book now, the book, not the yes. show. Just the book. Uh, <laughs> whoever so, has tuned in if... into our episode Let's start with our typical non-spoiler review Mm -hmm. when we start with our summary. So Outlander is about a woman who is on her second honeymoon with her husband after the the Second World War ended. And um, she goes and visits um, Craig Nadoon, which is in real life, I think, called... Kalane Stones, I think. I don't remember. Anyway, so yeah, she goes there and witnesses this ceremony at one of, um, at a time where it's um, uh, Christmas or Halloween. Christmas? It was Christmas then. Anyway, it was in a time of the year where it's like spiritual, I think. And uh, she goes there the second day to like look at flowers uh, there that have medicinal purposes. And she hears this buzzing and 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 she she feels this energy. So she goes towards the, the stone, the cleft in the, that had a, has a cleft a cleft in the middle of it. And suddenly <laughs> she's in a different time and yeah so <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pitch liner synopsis of the story anyway yeah yeah so it's a story about time traveling and uh soulmate your soulmate <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um and history it has a lot of history in it that is like based on a lot of articles is sort of historically correct most, yeah most of it like it's accurate I so think. i think the the novel so the time period of the novel is uh it has two time periods so we have the first one is in 1945 after the war the mm-hmm. first world war and in uh the time tra- when she travels back in time we have her in like 1500 something 1743 what 1743. 1743, right. Yeah. Um, so it's like completely different time periods and mm-hmm. uh, t- t- like seeing this experience of a woman from the 1940s struggle to um, to li- like go by in like a time where, um, of course, like it's not really modern for us anyway. <laughs> like we know that like in the 1940s compared to now is and like that nothing. that is so interesting. Like to, like this story was written in the 90s. So it was, okay, closer. It was when we were born, basically. Yeah. So it's yes, closer to what we are now. So so even back then when the book was first published, whoever was reading it, he was re- they were reading to, it's a historical fiction through and through like, 
the person who read it for the first time was reading about two times that are past their time. So mm-hmm. that's I I like that about the novel. It's, uh, I love even those. The book there. itself is a time travel, you know. Yeah, and I think in terms of like accuracy and research, we're not experts, but I think Gabaldon nailed it. I think in most parts, mm. um, she didn't like go too deep into like the historical stuff. I think she was still. Yeah, it was, the story was about the the people and it... their their struggles and ambitions and. Uh, their way of life uh, more than like a historical battle or something yes we have those but they're not the main thing it's yeah yeah it's something okay they lead up to the to, to that but it's not about that you know mm-hmm. yeah so mainly maybe you're listening to this episode to know like if you've watched this the show, is it worth reading the books? Or if you've read the books, is it worse? Is it worth reading? Yeah. As you, I mean, watching the shows. I would say yes and yes. <laughs> like if I don't you... know about that. Yeah, I don't know. Like for me, okay, this is something I wanted to talk to you about. Like mm-hmm. for me, the first time I watched the show. It was magical. Like, it yeah. could not be compared with anything else. The first time you watch Outlander, it's it's so... Like, how do I say? It's like an out-of-body experience, sort of. Mm-hmm. And I lost myself book, completely to that show. Yeah, me too. Like, I was reeling after it for a couple of days, and I was, like, having withdrawal symptoms and mm-hmm. everything. Yes. And... Uh, this this trying to recreate it, it didn't feel right with the book, you know? Like, going through the book, it didn't have the same energy, the same vibe. It was... I was reading the same exact characters, the same exact story. Everything was the same. But something wasn't right for me. Like, I think I would have enjoyed it um, a lot more if I had only watched the show, you mm. know? Because... Because even if I had read the book first, then I wouldn't have had that magical moment with the show because I've already read the book and I know what's going to happen in the show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I get like for for in terms of I mean, we've read so many books from the shows like Victoria and countless others. Yes. And th- those were successful for me. Like I loved the, pro- the, the process. But with Outlander, it was a bit of a chore to finish the book. Hmm. A bit. Like, maybe, like, 5%. And 5% isn't a lot. Maybe, yeah. Like, the book isn't as magical as the show if you've watched the show first. Yeah. But I imagine if if you've read the books and you're wondering whether to watch the shows or not, I think That's it will still be magical. Like, that first time watching the show because of the music, the, yeah. the spectacle, the effects. the It matters. It yes, matters so much. the characters, so the acting. It's, uh, yeah. it's, really, it's really nice. I think the beauty of it really comes out in the show. Like, mm. the book itself is beautiful. But, like, the magic of it, the essence. Yeah. It really comes alive mm-hmm. with the actors and the music and the costumes and... The amount of detail and effort that has been put into the show itself yes. is very visible. And the cast is amazing. Yeah. Like, if you're wondering if the show is, like, true to the book or not, it is. It adds it adds stuff, uh, which we're going to talk about later. Mm-hmm. And, it star- and there are scenes that start the same as in the book, but maybe don't finish. Like, the, like the book is very long. <laughs> it's too long. It's so long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it is one of the true adaptations, the ones that you mm-hmm. you won't be feel frustrated. No, they didn't do it like that. No, it was like that. Yeah, you know that's true. Yeah, that's true. And what's even better for that reason, I'd recommend the book. Yeah, but... and and it's even better because like you have different perspectives. You get you get Jamie's perspective, which is the main male character, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe <clears throat> others as well. While in the book, you're just through Claire's eye. I think right. that what takes away a bit of the Right, magic. yes, yeah. that was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That that opens 
and like alone that uh, opens a lot of discussions in our spoiler part because the, like so many things happened um, yeah that outside weren't... of claire's view and yeah okay so that's it for the non-spoiler uh -huh. you want to add anything um no i think we can give it a rating hmm the book the book out the of book not the show bye <laughs> okay show and book uh-huh if we put the show in that it's 10 out of 5 <laughs> <laughs> no i mean individually <laughs> i'd give the show a 5 out of 5 and the book i'd give it 4.5 yeah yeah me too yeah i think that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway thank you for listening to the non-spoiler part if yeah. you haven't read the book or watched the show <laughs> out. leave now out <laughs> sure <laughs> we gently tell you to leave <laughs> kindly be informed <laughs> i've been sending so many emails <laughs> <laughs> spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler 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 i mean yeah this is the part, if you have heard, listened to our podcast before, you know that this is the part where we go into a deeper analysis. We talk about mostly everything, <laughs> <laughs> or we try to. <laughs> okay, so we'll start by uh, comparing some of the things that happened in the show to, yeah. some, to what happened <clears throat> in the book. Wow, we're starting off with a strong one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we're dividing this part into like three points which Nesma kindly has written yeah. kindly again no I'm not in an email <laughs> I mean I'm cleverly a, I'm actually. an actual person here like, <laughs> when I looked when I looked at your points I I was like wow the masters are doing their job <laughs> I didn't even fully um like put my analysis on it because I I just didn't have the time but <laughs> Um, it, I was gonna go even more deeper with my identity thing because there was a seminar that I took it was called Identity in Shakespeare mm -hmm. and it was talking about all these types of different identities so you have like identity as sameness identity as uh, individual identity you have all types of identities and I thought this would be interesting to be applied on I sort of did that um, but we're going to do our own thing. Think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the... We'll start with the twins, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Comparing Frank and Jonathan Randall. And then we go into the travelers. The travelers, yes. Uh, comparing between Claire and Galus Duncan. Uh -huh. Which uh, I think is a then... very interesting one. Yeah. And then we have... The lovers. Yeah. Which I'm sure is what you're waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> A comparison between Jamie and Frank, and obviously. Frank. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, first one was the twins. No, the book versus the show. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, TV show versus book. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Ah, <laughs> why did I write down this phone? <laughs> okay. Uh, so the one of the things that I wanted to address, I don't know why we're starting with this point, but anyway, <laughs> um, it was Jamie's um, Jamie's rape scene in the TV show versus the book. So um, I was asking myself. So in the book, if you've read the book, uh, you'll know that the scene wasn't really portrayed in the novel mm -hmm. it was sort of narrated by jamie what happened but not yeah. really in the intense way that it was portrayed in the tv show yes like in the tv show we were with him in the scene yeah well in the book he was telling us about what happened so mm -hmm. it's completely different experience <laughs> so the question is why did they choose to add this the scene in the show you know and i think it's also this idea of tackling um, or, or not being afraid of addressing something that is isn't being addressed in a way, you know, like mm. um, this like this awareness. Definitely see stories and hear about like women rape being raped. Yeah, but not men. 
exactly like, but it happens to men too and it does happen yes yeah and that was very like strange to see like it was super uncomfortable mm -hmm. i did not watch the whole scene i had to skip it it took me it, it, it took me in a way i mean you know when your whole life you know that men are like these strong creatures you and know you can they're rely on them and they're and like masculine and they're and... there to be strong you know and yeah and capable and then to see them defied like that i'm not saying that it's not okay it's not okay for a man and okay for a woman it's just like they're both not okay but yeah it was more it's like this i, don't know. I like to see <laughs> that's a weird way to put it but i <laughs> i like i like to see the the process of how what a man goes through when that happens you know how they they feel like their masculinity is being stripped away mm -hmm this vulnerability suddenly that your spouse knows about what happened to you mm -hmm. and this idea of um, being touched and being loved by someone when you feel disgusted and um, icky in your own skin. Yeah. That it takes like this immense amount of um, strength and convincing yourself that you're okay, you know, but... Yeah, it's... he even described it in a really good way. He said that it's like there is this part of yourself that you hide from everyone. Not hide, but protect like in a fortress or like in a room. Yeah. And now the, the, these walls are down. Are and, crumbled, and, yeah. Uh, and he, he's bare. Like, yeah. He feels bare, like stripped of any uh, self-dignity or, or self sense you know yeah like he's he's out there vulnerable you mm -hmm. know exactly yeah yeah and the this begs the question of could the same message be delivered without showing the scene and i think honestly yes mm. <laughs> i think you could have we, seen the aftermath but not the scene itself yeah we didn't have to see all of it um it was pretty pointless and i imagine the actors were pretty uncomfortable acting that <laughs> True, <laughs> like <maybe>. imagine <laughs> I'd imagine the same thing. It's not like a day in the sun and their acting carrier, you know? It's not easy. No, no. And I but I think it's uh it's a challenge for an actor to do that. And mm. I think they're they're seeing it from that point of view. They're not seeing it from like how can I make this interesting? How can I make this blah 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 everything. But I honestly think that um the show would have still been the same. The character would have still been looked at the same without this scene being mm. actually depicted. Because eventually, like in in the next seasons, if you haven't watched them or read the next books, it's it becomes something of the past. In yeah, a way. you forget about it. Like yeah, you you stop like. It stops being in their daily life in a way. So it stops being eventually. relevant. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point? I don't know. And I imagine it was triggering for, for people who've gone through that. And yeah. Not just men, I think. Just in general. Mm. Okay. One thing, though, I liked about the, the show in general was the episode of the wedding uh, -huh. uh it was told in such a way like back then i think i was uh, i was studying editing and i was amazed by that episode because i like from my studies i love like i loved editing that isn't in chronological order that takes the story and uh like retains the story arc mm -hmm. but tells it out of order and uh, and that episode did it perfectly and in a seamless way, you know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like that. I like the telling of it. And uh, in the book, it's like chronological. Yes. Yeah. Just things Obviously. happen as they happened. <laughs> uh -huh. It 
honestly, in a book, it would be confusing to, to go back and forth between the wedding itself and the wedding night, the wedding itself and the wedding It would night, be impossible know? in writing writing stance. I don't think it would be interesting to read. I think it would mm. be confusing. Mm -hmm. But the cutting, they use the transitions, like the going from here to there it was yeah. nice. With you the actually rewatched the show while you were reading the book. Yeah, right? yeah. I didn't. I had forgotten about that episode. I didn't like I wasn't binge watching it so when I started that episode I thought maybe uh, like I, Netflix had had like jumped in the episode yeah. uh like maybe where I left it or something mm -hmm. and then I look at the timeline and no I go back to the to the previous episode no I didn't skip anything no what was happening because they started in the, with the wedding night and I'm like wasn't the I remember there was a wedding. <laughs> Where is the wedding? You know, it was confusing for me the second time around because I already I already know I watched the wedding, you know. Uh, the wedding ceremony, the, my favorite re coat. I have it as a sticker on my computer. Uh, blood I, of I my blood. That you're blood of my blood, you're bone of my bone. Uh, okay, now I don't remember this. <laughs> I love that one. Big fan! <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> so I was like, I w I was waiting for that ceremony to to like listen to the code again, and uh, they didn't start with it. So yeah, second time around, it was confusing. And uh, there was this part um, in the show. It was the same in the book, but not like in the book. She she went up. Uh, to the stones and she was about to go in and she was contemplating whether to travel or not jamie was waiting for her and uh wait no 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 sorry i jumped ahead there was the time when she stumbled on the stones and then uh they caught her and took her to fort william right yeah yeah when she was leaving jamie you mean when frank was calling her yes yeah in the book, it was just her going to the stones and then seeing them and then yeah. being taken away. Uh -huh. But uh, in the TV show, it was the TV more show, intense. She actually went up there and she was like calling for him and he heard her and she heard him and sort of, or it seemed that way. And it was so, so intense. That's what I like said in the non-spoiler episode. The show has this intensity to it that's yeah. not present in the book you exactly because you I see was the missing other character that. you know yeah uh so yeah that that moment in the show uh felt to me like uh one of my favorite anime films uh your name i don't know if any of you have watched it but it's really good it's 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 this love story between two characters who swap bodies and then are two years apart <laughs> in the timeline something like that what yeah it's amazing <laughs> wow i've never watched it how yeah. come we've never watched it together i don't know uh we, i i'm planning to watch it again with my father actually i can watch it with you again it's an amazing film wow. and uh, i read the novelization of it so after like no actually it's not after it's while they were making the film they wrote the, they wrote the novel it was something like that mm-hmm yeah, they both developed together. It yeah. was one of the interesting things. I think the one thing that made the story a bit more intense is because we had Frank's perspective in the show. Yeah, exactly. And that was very, um, not just the scene from the stones, I mean, in general. Mm. like He his, was looking for her at the police. Even with... the point where he was like depressed without her. And there were like scenes where he was looking for her and... Um, like asking people do they know anything you know mm -hmm. there was like you you feel like that somebody still cares ab yeah. about her on the other side it intensifies know? the need for her to to go yeah like to go back like not in, not for her like the viewer would want her to go back what about frank you know it's, yeah uh, yeah but actually i never really felt frank as a like real close partner to her I, d I don't know why something about them together wasn't like clicking properly but um like the chemistry was wasn't right mm -mm. yeah yeah i agree with you but watching the show for the first time i 
I felt this heaviness as in I was like I was so connected to Claire you know I was like it was so in there so I felt like looking at both of them and I know she wants to go back I felt stuck like like seeing Frank wanting her and she can't go to him I felt I felt how how stuck she feels you know yeah Uh, with, with knowing that someone is is waiting for her or looking for her she probably thought about that and she did in the book a lot she did think about going back to frank a lot yeah and what he's time. doing right now and and where is he like what is he doing to yeah. find her and how he won't find her and that drove her crazy a little bit <laughs> yeah okay so we were wondering about the scene where Jamie, oh yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So I wanted to address the scene in the show uh, where Jamie was standing. I think this is the very first episode. Yeah. Yeah. The Where Jamie was standing underneath Claire's window. She was like in the bathroom, like uh, brushing her brushing hair. hair. And he was like, I, I don't know standing, what. Standing so still. Yes. Yeah. And he was, I think, saying something or like blowing her a kiss or something. It was, I, I remember there was like a hand gesture. It's been a while since I watched the first no, episode. No, 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 no. There wasn't a hand gesture. It was just, he was just looking at her window. I'm pretty sure there was a hand standing gesture. standing so still. He didn't move. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, it but doesn't like matter what he was of, doing. The set, no, but the set of his shoulders. And like the tilt of his head to her window from behind, yeah. it was... He was this... wearing a hat as well. Mm. And I was wondering, how did he get there? You know? Yeah. I was I was thinking how... I thought it was only maybe like certain people that can time travel. And, yeah, I, and I, I'm pretty sure we'd establish that he can't. He can't. Because Otherwise, he can't her hear life the buzzing. would have been so much easier. They would have just left the danger and went to the future. But again, I was wondering if it is related to timing. You know, maybe it could be something at a certain time frame. You mm. can time travel or anyone can time travel. But it needs to be a, like a window, you know. It, you can't just go as you please. But Claire could no, go. No, no, but at, but as the show progresses, you can tell that he can't, cause Claire feels stuff and hears stuff. This buzzing. Yeah, but that he can't. He yeah, and other people don't. He, that scene was so I imagine, intriguing. I imagine that on that night it was Halloween and the veil between, like as they say, the spiritual world and the living world is yeah. thin. So since he, by 1945, he is already dead. <laughs> Maybe um, he, he came to visit her in that time when she was still there. You know, missing missing her. But that, but I'd like to think that they are sort of dead together. Or is he like... Right, he didn't move. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't move. It was so still. I just checked. <laughs> yeah. But that's crazy. Show like... me the frame again. You stop that? <laughs> anyway he was right there see the set of his shoulders and ah okay yeah, yeah, that was his the hand yeah, on yeah, the... yeah, yeah. see i knew there was something that he did yeah that's true he was like holding himself up we're watching the scene again guys <laughs> <laughs> he like he put his hand on the uh on like the stone yeah the, on the side yeah to hold himself up it's like frank went up to him he turns and he's gone he must have been like a ghost or something. Yeah. That's the only way to explain that he just disappeared out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah, but... It's like he was missing her. Does that mean that when they're dead, he can't be with her until she dies in her own time or something? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that would be so sad. That would make sense a little, I guess. But I think that is one of the scenes that maybe a lot of people overlook. You know, mm. it's like it's like so tiny... And when you move on into the seasons, you, you, forget, you forget about, about it. it. But it was in the book as well, so it should mean something. Yeah, it does know? mean something. She, they wouldn't put it there un- unless... Maybe maybe it's also like an exploration thing for the author as well. Like sometimes I'm, I'm pretty sure that like 
authors experiment with these sort of things like they write scenes into the book that sometimes they know they don't know how they will unravel later Mm. and maybe she's like sort of having fun with it like how can i incorporate that in later on into the novel like will i make him a ghost will i make him an actual person in that time or um but like we've just seen we just saw the scene and Mm. he still looks young yeah like so it had to have happened sort of like uh, before he got older you know Mm. before so i don't think it's actually plausible that um uh he actually time traveled so i think your your theory could stick better um Mm. With. Yeah, and it was also I think at the beginning of the episode they had that blood thing with the frame. I think that was also something related to the dead, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like to ward off the dead or something like that. Uh, no, to sacrifice to the to the dead people because they had to kill someone underneath every building they built or something like that it was. Ah. So it was to sacrifice to them or something. Okay, yeah. Or they stopped doing that, so they're sacrificing, so the building... Something... <laughs> something like that. Anyway. Something crazy like that. <laughs> uh, moving on to our next point. Are you going to talk about Dougal now or later? Mm, not sure. Yeah. But like, in the show... Dougal was much more flirty <laughs> than in the book. In the book, he was actually kind of, sort of, a teeny bit <laughs> more respectful. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. He stole a kiss, but she, that's she, all he did. Yeah, but she, she portrayed him as a fatherly figure more of than, yeah, uh-huh. that kind of man in the show. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I think because he was sort of attractive as well in the show, mm-hmm. even though he's like 50 Over something. 40, 50. <laughs> um, but he he had that charismatic mm. appeal to him. And you, you feel like when you have this guy on your side, you can basically win every fight. Mm, you do whatever. <laughs> 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 okay. Now to the most important part. Uh, character versus character. <laughs> uh, we said we start with the twins. Yeah. Right? Okay, so a comparison between Frank and Jonathan Randall. So we have the idea that Frank has traces of Jonathan's unnatural behavior, which is reflected in the scene at the beginning of the novel, mm-hmm. when Frank was, like, super fascinated by the blood, the blood smeared, smeared on the, wall, the, door, on the frame. door frames. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He has this creepiness to him, and I think the casting really nailed it. Like, when you look at him, he has this essence to play a character that is, like, psychotic... Mm. But also sweet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like how, how he has those facial features that mm. just, he's blessed with this kind of <laughs> you know, where, You know where else I find him uh, have acted when he was younger? Yeah, who? Uh, the actor who played Frank and Jonathan Randall. Yeah. James Bond Casino Royale. No way. Yes, he was some person in the MI, you know? Who who helps with technological stuff at the beginning? So he was tracking James Bond basically okay. and telling M where he is and stuff, <laughs> and figuring out his next move. Uh-huh. Uh, I was like, no way! I was rewatching the film and I was yeah. like, no way! <laughs> is that him? <laughs> no freaking way! <laughs> so we have um, yeah this comparison going on of between Frank and Jonathan and I think it's very intensified in the show because it's the same actor acting both roles so uh, mm. you have like in the book mirror. you can imagine two pe- two people who look alike but are not the same but mm-hmm. in the show they're it's pretty like, much uh, the same it's like Catherine and Elena from Vampire Diaries <laughs> yes yes yeah 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 so which begs the question why do they look alike you know, mm. I think that is also an interesting perspective. Or why the author made them look exactly alike. When we discussed this before, I think 
we re rested on the idea of uh, just to justify how Claire was confused at times that she would slip up thinking he's he's as good as Frank and maybe there is good in him but mm -hmm. no he's awful just to create this tension and, and conflict of not being able to to leave and go back to Frank or later on not wanting to go back to Frank in a way I don't know yeah I think it's gonna like for the conscience of the reader or or viewer in this case is to like relief that idea of leaving someone behind you know mm -hmm. like this oh he's he's like jonathan you know so we're leaving someone bad behind anyway so why would we want to go back but yeah it's like this they're not the same they're not the same people because mm -hmm. then but, but in a way also, yeah. yeah not just not to forget frank in general in the yeah. beginning to keep like remembering keep that she needs to go back you yeah. know um, I think it's also in terms of story, you know, because in the book you don't have the perspective of Frank from the future, mm. so you have to keep something of Frank in the going. book. Yes, and like like seeing an expression of Frank or like you know. Yeah, and maybe to 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 look at the idea of heritage that maybe uh, personality traits can go from from one person to another. Yeah. yeah. If they're related somehow. And, and actually I see that in my family sometimes. Yeah. I mean it is proven that that, that, that is the case. Yeah. But it's like in terms of people raising each other. Upbringing you know, and not upbringing, genetics. Yeah. It's not genetic. Mm. or. So I think that was like an interesting approach to it. Is it scientifically proven that that actually is the case? <laughs> but also... The idea that maybe your great ancestor was that awful person doesn't make you that awful. Like, like okay, I don't know. I don't want to offend people, but maybe uh, the descendants of Hitler aren't as bad as him <laughs> if he yeah. had children. You know, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you know, whoa, don't. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I guess it's the same idea. Like, don't, don't. What, what is, what's it called? You know, um, make the young carry the punishment for the mistake ah. of the, their elders you know yeah it's not wow. their problem we've gone back to a bastard of istanbul <laughs> asia and uh, the heritage of <laughs> <laughs> yeah by the way if you haven't watched that episode <laughs> feel free to do that yeah i think that is a good discussion about the frank and jonathan randall situation and i think this is a bit of a head scratcher i think there's like a lot of a lot to explore mm. in this department and yes. a lot to compare because of this similar appeal that they have and i think as in terms of like writing an essay or a term paper or <laughs> anything related to that i think this could be something interesting to explore mm -hmm. moving on to the travelers clarying galus duncan and galus duncan <laughs> galus duncan 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 <laughs> duncan <laughs> so the reason why i wanted to bring these two up is because I loved this approach to two time travelers, but with two different stories, mm. you know? Yeah. Galis was more of a seizing the moment. Mm. An activist. An activist. She an planned this. She planned to be in that time. Yeah. It wasn't an accident. That lady did her research. Yeah. <laughs> and... She was smart in a way that she figured out how to live in the time period in the best advantages possible. Mm -hmm. So instead of wallowing in her uh, modern views like feminism or like r her personal rights as a, as a human being, it's like a little bit different in that period because mm -hmm. um, things just work differently, you know, like in terms of. I mean, basically, women were breeding stock and cookers and... Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's and all they that's all they were. Yeah. So 
in that time, women had to be useful. Mm. Women had to do something to be, yeah. Unless you're like super rich, then you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, but in terms of that, we could even see that like reflected in Claire. Like once she arrived, she always had to find something useful to do in mm. order to be um, accepted in accepted. the community. Yeah. Um, starting with like the simple stuff, like in the kitchen, mm. she tried to help here and there. Um, I don't know. She collecting herbs. Yeah. Uh, and then exploiting her skill in not exploiting in healing. really, but like yeah, in healing. Yeah. In and making a stand for herself and yeah, exactly. Claire was a bit more aggressive in taking her rights. Mm. She didn't let anyone go near her. She was like, I know who I am and I know what I don't accept. Um, so I think and Galus was the quite the opposite so she was strategic yeah i think it's the okay. word so yeah like un- like this is a very this is a main point in comparison between them gales came here with a purpose and claire was just there by accident mm-hmm. and they both had different goals Cla- gales wanted to help the jacobite maybe she can maybe she thought she's able to change history maybe she she got that idea when she got there but she just wanted so bad to be part of it because she was such an activist yeah she she comes from a very very different scotland and claire was just claire was like was thrust there and at a time in her life where she just wanted to settle down and start a family yeah um find something to do and like you know live a normal life she wanted to buy a vase (laughs) Poor yeah. thing, never Poor. got to buy that vase. Yeah, <laughs> no, she, actually, in the book, she did buy it, and that was one of the things that I thought. Okay, so in the future, they'd be thinking, what woman would buy a vase and leave her husband? So they would eliminate the idea that she's left him for someone else. Ah. you know, I don't know. I had that idea anyway. Right. Wow, Detective Hanin. <laughs> So this is the Sherlock in me. <laughs> uh, yeah, what I was saying. And instead, she's in that situation where she's back to violence. She she doesn't have a home. She doesn't belong in that place. She doesn't belong in that country. And, and all she wants is just to go back. But instead, she started adapting, but in a very different way from Gail. It's like she started adapting with her maybe modern values in yeah. a way yeah and she had to deal with a lot of uh, uh, cynicism than than gail is like they were always wondering if she is spy what is why is she here is she really who she says she is while gail is just blended in you know mm-hmm. until it escalated with the <laughs> witch trial uh which both of them were were in for different reasons but the same like both of them because of their healing we thought because of their knowledge of the future they were outcasts in a way and thought of yeah. as like people who are weird <laughs> i don't know yeah but what's what's what what i don't understand is why gail is just gail is the one with a purpose like she saw that claire doesn't have a purpose yeah why did she just leave her no, not not leave her, but um, like submit or uh, what's it called? Uh, why did she just surrender? Uh, why did she just surrender? She 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 has a purpose, you know. <laughs> why what why did she surrender f- for Claire to have a chance? Like, why does she care? And even later on, this is not really spoiler. You don't get why, like. I know the thing with Galus ended very weirdly. Mm. I think it was all for nothing. That's what it felt like. Yeah. You know. And also the baby. What happened to the baby? <laughs> yeah, we know she gave birth to it, but and she, and it's somewhere taken care of. But why doesn't have a role? Why have it in the first place if yeah. it doesn't have a role? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like it's it's seen like the one where where Jamie is standing in front of Claire's window or, uh, or, Gail's baby. Do they 
tie in in maybe book eight or something <laughs> like i don't know how the story mm, maybe the baby well. comes back for revenge <laughs> <laughs> who knows so last section <laughs> The lovers. The lovers. <laughs> How did each couple meet? Okay, so like the circumstances of like each of the meeting was um, Frank and Claire were... Uh... I think with Frank, it was more of a love match. Mm. You know, it was... She found someone that she's attracted to and she married him because of that. Yeah. You know, because she loves him. Yeah. With Jamie, it was sort of a planned thing but to protect her from something and mm. then the love was uh, sprouted from that you know it wasn't yes. like they were totally in love and they wanted to get married it wasn't something like that which mm. is ironic because you'd think that if he's her soulmate that they fall in love before that and then they get married <laughs> yes. but it's sort of the other way around even mm. if you compare it to frank with frank she marries him because she loves him mm. but later on it's like a it's like an okay relationship like they're they don't hate each other yeah yeah they are on the same terms they want to have make a family and together. they found harmony together like yeah he'd find he'd found something to look after and you know, like his family tree and like he suggested that what if she likes botany and yeah like flower and fauna flora and fauna and stuff mm -hmm. and uh they, so they found like they wanted they found this quite harmonious life life yeah or the start of it uh with jamie on the other hand it was very like dangerous life-threatening situations mm. uh she had to be constantly saved uh <laughs> and like healing him <laughs> and healing him and it was sort of like uh, an advantageous marriage in a way. Oh like uh, yeah, it's it reminded me of the arranged marriage. Yeah, they, they would like we would see in our old dramas or exactly yeah yeah where where they would find that they love each other after all you uh -huh. know <laughs> yeah and with each other they le learned a lot about themselves and. The... And I l always remember that part in the show and the book mm -hmm. where Jamie asks, is this like normal what happens between a yeah, man and a woman? Yes. She's like, it happens, but not like this. You yeah. know, this is special. This they is not found, normal. They have found that profound connection. Yeah. And intensity. And um, yeah, so that takes us to who is the better man for her of course we see which one is the better love story the one with like high stakes and yeah could go any moment uh but, but who I th I is with the... jamie we see that he she's constantly exposed to danger mm -hmm. and i think jamie like one day he will not be able to protect her you know i think yeah. there will be there will come one day where he won't be able to you know or i mean like hypothetically yeah, yeah. you know so in terms of like who's the better man for her as like a secure happy life where she can grow old normally happily i think frank would be the better option but if we're talking about soulmates and love and all that uh jamie through and through you know hmm but yes and 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 they think claire herself kept trying to explore that yeah she was like i don't love him but this is not normal what about frank mm -hmm. like she remembers when he asked her is this normal and she think no it isn't it wasn't like that with frank yeah. she started do comparing. i just let this go like people look for this their whole lives yeah and i just like let it go yeah and she, she was at that point when they were going to into castle leoc intensify the like let the connection go on or not she was yeah. in between do i like stop it there mm -hmm. or like because she started feeling yeah i'm falling the in same love. yeah yeah and uh and she got scared at that point but then later on after she tells him about what happens and he believes her and there's this funny quote where it would have been much easier if you were just a witch, Sasanak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have yeah. been so true. Uh, and then him trying to let her go back to her own time 
the part of uh, like sacrificing yeah. you know that shows how greatly he does really love her and then she finds him sort of was crying and Aww. yeah there's no going back from that and then later on he tells her uh and this is the code i was trying to find for half an hour now and couldn't find it <laughs> um uh, i don't remember it exactly but it's like i can't make you mine without losing part of myself as well it was along those lines ah i remember that yes yeah Yeah. and it was uh and clary reflected in no clary reflected that frank didn't reach that point like Mm. you know letting himself go oh like the idea of losing oneself Uh uh-huh yeah to the other to 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 be each other's you know yeah um so that like other half answers yes the the who's the best man for her or the best man who was made for her sort of yeah. knowing to like answer the soulmate thingy <laughs> thingy anyway um but then let's ask ourselves who wh- needs her more yeah who needs her more yeah that would be a very interesting question mm-hmm. like I personally wouldn't know the answer to this, but it would be interesting to explore. Mm. Like, I don't know if Jamie needs her, needs her, needs her, you know? He was ready to let go at some point. Yeah, I think he was prepared to let go. And if you think about his life without her, like the the moment before she came into his life, I'm wondering if the arc would have been the same, like not in specific the specifics, like details or something mm. like that. I mean, like, would he have gone to Lally Brock? Would he have gone back mm. if he hadn't married Claire? Because I think that was sort of a bit of a motivation for yeah. him because now he has a wife. He wants to give her the best. Yes. He wants to go home. And now because he has a wife, he feels like, okay, I, I want to go back to my family. You mm-hmm. know, I want to be with them. So... But with without Claire, I think it would have been like, okay, I don't want to put my family in danger, so mm. I'll just stay back. Yeah, and he would have been more entangled with the Mackenzies. And he would have been been alone. I think he maybe would have been... What was her name? Leary? Mm. I think maybe he would have gone in that direction. Yeah. But he wouldn't have really known love you know no he would have experienced something like what clary experienced uh, claire with sorry. frank with frank yeah. yeah but it's not them you know but still does he need her in her life in his life i'd say yes he's constantly hurt <laughs> like he, really he, yeah that then he he needs a nurse then he doesn't need a wife <laughs> or a soulmate like anyone can fix him up that doesn't mean that he necessarily needs claire for that I think it's... Okay, no, he needs her because she was the only one who could ransom his soul. Who could bring him back after the rape. But who was, like... That would have never happened if Claire wasn't there. Maybe it would have eventually. Randall is who he is and he wants what he wants. And maybe he would have been captured event- eventually i think jamie became more of a target for him because of claire yeah definitely yeah he was kind of jealous <laughs> yeah and he loved playing with that you know mm. messing with her messing with him yeah uh, leaving his mark Sinister. sort of <laughs> yeah but let's get, get to frank i think the thing is okay with Frank, he already had her in his life a couple years. So mm. he it's she's like already part of his life. Yeah. You know? And I don't think that without her, his life would have looked um really very nice. Like I I, I imagine like from the point on where she disappears, mm. um his life is I think pretty dull. I think the only reason that he can't move on or he feels like he's miserable is because he doesn't know why she left. I think if mm. she, if he knew the why, 
I think he he could move on, but or maybe not. He not because the why wouldn't make him want to move on. He would it would make him want to save her. You yeah, know? I think uh, no. I think Frank needs her more than than Jamie. You know why? Because they're two completely different men in a two completely different period. Yeah, you know, in in, in 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 Frank's period, I think. He would want to wife because he's a professor. Yeah. And like this societal thing. It's yeah. not like her role with Frank would have been more mm-hmm. prominent in yeah. society than than it is with with yeah. Jamie. I think with Jamie, even if you look at his lifestyle, uh, having a wife slows him down pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know, constantly on the run, having to go quickly. I think if he has... Like with Claire, Claire it worked pretty well because she didn't have any ties. You know, mm. she had no family. Claire was the best no character one. to be like transferred, with, like travel through time because yes, she doesn't have any ties. Yeah. No one would ask her about her except Frank. Yeah. And Frank can't ask about her because he doesn't know where she is. <laughs> so I think that answers the question, I think, because... Doesn't mean that Jamie doesn't need her. Yeah, yeah. It, he needs her, of course, because he's in love with her. But it's the question of need in 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 way of providing, you know. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, that was an interesting question. Ooh, next question is <laughs> a whole other topic. Yeah. How should we go about this? So the question is. Uh, what if she had married Dougal? Hear us out. <laughs> <laughs> this might seem like a weird question, but... Uh, yeah, but it's quite interesting. The thought process of it, if the the marriage that you said was... Uh, what's it called? Arranged. I said, what? Arranged marriage? Yes, arranged marriage. We were talking in terms of uh, Dougal because we know that he has a lot of influence. Mm-hmm. He's like sort of the leader because with the situation with his brother and um, even and then the leading the Jacobite army. Yeah. And the thing is, like, if you think about why did Claire travel through time? Like, what was the purpose of it? Was yeah. it just to find her soulmate mm-hmm. or was it to change the future or to change right. the past? I remember we went that way. Yeah. Yeah. So then right. marrying Dougal would have made more sense because yeah, they, and then she would true. have influence. Yeah. And that what Galus actually wanted. <laughs> Someone dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know who keeps thumping whatever it is on their on our ceiling. This it's terrible. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, with Dougal it would have made more sense. You know, because then if she had confided in him and he would have found out the truth, um, he could have, like, used information in order to, like... To help his cause. Yeah, yeah. he might be like, tell me what's going to happen, I'll let you go, or... Yeah. Yeah. I remember now what else we said. We said that the reason why Dougal wouldn't have been a good option is because he wouldn't have let her go. Mm, he would have exploited her, yeah. basically. Yeah. He would have kept her there. He wouldn't have taken her to Craig Nadoon and helped her get back to Frank. And yeah. then, like he would have been a little bit selfish about it, I think. Mm. And then we would really want her to go back because then there's no love in that time. Like, yeah. What really ties her in that time is her love for Jamie and Jamie's exactly. love for her. Otherwise, she would, she would go have gone back. Ha- yeah. back in a heartbeat. Yeah. Which takes us to to the lost connection between between Frank and Claire. It was already thin because of the years apart. And then Jamie came in, but but still he doesn't know that. He doesn't... Understand. Yeah. Which puts him as a character in a very difficult position. We can see that in the show, not in the book, clearly. Even though Claire wonders what he's doing now. If he's trying to find her. Is he with the police? Is he, like, dreading to hear about, like, them finding her body I don't know I just and I think that lost connection has to do with uh, with Randall as well like seeing him wearing Frank's face and doing those awful things yeah 
and treating her in that way, it's it also creates it, that it'll barrier. It'll mess with your head if yeah. you see someone who looks like your husband doing all these awful things to your soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, yeah, that's pretty messed up. But I think that Claire is strong enough to differentiate them from each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it doesn't matter in the end. Like Claire is for Jamie and Jamie is for Claire. And we can go on and on and on and on and on about how wonderful the relationship is. And with its imperfections and everything. Uh, I think we've talked enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Outlander. most definitely. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess we'll see you next chapter. Yes. We're doing The Handmaid's Tale. The Handmaid's Tale. Tale. Handmaid's Tale, finally. We've been wanting to do that for two years or something. <laughs> yeah, we keep saying that about all our books, I've noticed. That yeah, we always have this punchline of... <laughs> <laughs> We've been wanting to do this book forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Handmaid's Tale has something. We keep starting it and then not doing it, starting it and not doing it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We yeah. started it a couple times. All right. Next time. Chapter 38. Thank you for making it to the end of this chapter. We really enjoyed sharing this book with you guys and hope that we've sparked some discussions with your bookworm friends. For the next time, we are picking up a timeless book. Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. So if you haven't read it, read it along with us and join us for the spoiler section of our next chapter on Between the Pages podcast. Mark the page for chapter 38.